In this video, we will cover using the MPC software as a plugin within Logic Pro. Before you use the MPC software as a plugin within Logic, you first need to authorize the MPC software. You can only authorize the MPC software in the standalone version. That means before you use the plugin, you have to launch the standalone MPC application and authorize it. I'll include a link to a separate walkthrough on authorizing the MPC software in the description of this YouTube video. As of version 1.0, the MPC software is a 32-bit application only. What this means for Logic users is that if you run Logic in 64-bit mode, the MPC plugin will not show up as an available instrument inside Logic. What you must do is launch and use Logic in 32-bit mode in order to see and use the plugin. So first we'll cover that. Locate Logic in the Finder. If you have it in your dock, you can command click it and that'll show it in the Finder. And with Logic Pro highlighted, you can go to File and choose Get Info or press Command I to get show the Logic Pro info window. Look for and make sure that the Open in 32-bit mode option is checked. This will make Logic run in 32-bit mode and you'll be able to see the plugin. Again, this is a version 1.0 specific feature. Before we launch Logic, you want to make sure that the MPC is connected to your computer via a USB port and powered on. Your MPC came with a, uh, a number of disks. The first disk is called MPC Software, and on that are three separate installers. You want to make sure that you've run all three of those before attempting anything in this video. The first installer is the driver that lets the MPC hardware communicate to your computer. The second one is the MPC Software that includes the standalone application as well as all of the plugins. Uh, you know, the VST and audio units. And you also want to install the content, which is the third installer on that first MPC software disk. That includes all of your basic sounds. Once you have all of that installed, once you have your MPC connected to your computer and powered on, let's go ahead and launch Logic. So Logic by default is going to load the last project that I worked on, but I'm going to immediately close that and we'll start with a brand new empty project so that we can all start on the same page. So we'll go ahead and close this out and we'll hit Command N or choose File and New and select Empty Project. So now we're all starting on the same page. Okay, so the MPC plugin is a virtual software instrument. And so we're gonna create a we're gonna create one software instrument track. Now uh, you do have the option of creating a multi-timbral software instrument. Um, we are going to use and show how to use the multi-output version of the plugin in this video but uh, selecting multi-timbral here is not uh, required to, to do that. And so we're gonna just create a single software instrument track, one track in our project. Down to the lower left of your screen, above this channel strip, above stereo out and below IO, you're going to click here, and you're going to choose AU Instruments, Akai, MPC. Now there's two options, there's stereo and multi-output. Most of the features and things we're gonna show in this video are available in both versions of the plugin. We're gonna load the multi-output version because we're gonna also show some multi-output specific features. I will note in the video when we're talking about features that are only available in this version of the plugin. For the whole rest of the video, everything we're gonna show is available in the stereo version as well. So we're gonna choose multi-output version, multi-output eight by stereo. The plugin's going to launch and it is gonna be in a compact mode. It's not going to look exactly like it does in standalone mode. You can grab the lower right hand corner of the window and expand it out as big as you want until it looks just like it does in standalone mode. When it's a plugin, you're going to see the typical Logic plugin header up here. This is available and visible in all of your plugins, and you can hide it to save a little screen space by clicking this, uh, this little bubble here. And so, for the most part, the plugin's gonna work very similar to the way it does in standalone mode. One of the first things you'll want to do is to map the transport controls. The transport controls on your MPC hardware can be used to control both the transport controls in Logic and the transport controls inside the MPC plugin. Before we go into the Logic control mapping window, you'll want to make one setting adjustment here inside the plugin. 
At the top of the plugin, you'll find several tabs, Main, Program Edit, Program Mixer. To the left of that, you'll see this icon, which is the Options menu. Click on this and choose Edit Preferences. This option menu gives you access to a lot of the options that are available inside the standalone version. In the Preferences window, under Other, look for Hardware Transport C. This is set to Plugin by default, and for now, we're going to set this to DAW. And what this does, essentially, is it tells the MPC uh, hardware logic and, and the software who should listen to the record button when you push it out here on the hardware. When this is set to DAW, that means Logic can hear the record button. When it's set to Plugin, it means that the MPC plugin can uh, hear the record button. Why is this important? When you're using the MPC plugin inside Logic, you essentially have two sequencers. You have Logic with its timeline, its transport controls, record, stop, play, and you also have the MPC plugin with its timeline and uh, its transport controls, record, stop, play. Typically, whether you're using this MPC plugin or a traditional uh, vintage MPC, you have multiple sequencers going on, um, you're going to record into one or the other at any given point during your production process. During the beginning, during your beat making, you might record your drums and your, your sampling into the MPC, but then later on in the process, you might record vocals, bass, guitar, etc., into tracks out here in Logic, and you might mix them all together in the end. You're going to go back and forth between recording to the tracks inside the MPC plugin and recording to the tracks inside Logic. And so this option allows you to choose where you're going to record to. And during the mapping process, we want to give Logic access to the record button. So again, we're going to go to Preferences Other, and we're going to set Hardware Transport C to DAW. Okay, now let's open Logic's key commands window. You can hit Option K on your keyboard, or you can go to Logic Pro, Preferences, Key Commands. Again, that's Option K. We're going to map several options under the Global Commands window. The Global Commands menu is the first item in the list, and we're going to map Record, Play, Stop, Rewind, and Forward. So Record, uh, we're going to map first. And it's important to note that when we hit record, our Logic project is probably going to start recording. When we hit play, it's going to play. When we hit stop, it's going to stop. While we're mapping these commands, just let that happen. Don't go down and stop it. Don't worry that you hear the metronome all of a sudden. Just let that happen. We'll complete the mapping, and then we'll go ahead and stop the, the transport. So with the record uh, command highlighted here on the screen, we're going to click the Learn New Assignment. When we do, Logic is going to be listening for the first MIDI command from any device connected to your computer. So if you have other keyboards, other controllers, or pedals connected, don't press or manipulate any controls on those during this process. Okay, so we're going to click Learn New Assignment, and we're going to press the Record button on our MPC hardware. And so you can see here this message has been mapped to the Record button. We're going to continue on, and we're going to select the Stop button here. Click Learn New Assignment again. It's, it's listening. We're going to press stop on the hardware controller. We'll select play, click learn new assignment, push play on the hardware controller. Great. Now we'll click rewind, click learn new assignment, and then on the hardware controller we're going to hit the event back button. We'll click forward in the software, Click Learn New Assignment and click Event Forward on the MPC hardware. We finished our mapping. I'm going to close this window even though our sequencer is playing. I'm going to click Stop in here in the software. Actually, we'll go ahead and click it on the hardware. So now we've mapped our controls. It's important to note that the Locate, Start, and End buttons on the hardware don't send any MIDI messages at all to anybody. These buttons send messages only to the MPC plugin, and uh, the messages that they send are not accessible uh, inside Logic. So now that we have our uh, commands mapped, we're going to go back into this Preferences window, Edit Preferences, and we're going to set this back under Other to Plugin, because the first thing you're probably going to want to do with your MPC plugin is record into the plugin. And so this will allow this record button here in the plugin to hear the messages from the hardware. Now is also a good time to save our template. 
The mapping that we've done is something that you should only have to do one time. And the idea is that all logic users should be on their on the search for their ultimate template. Meaning that when you walk into your studio and you have an idea and you want to start um, a new project, you should be able to open logic and have all of your favorite plugins loaded with all of your favorite effects, EQs, compressors, a few instruments ready, a whole palette ready to go so that you can sit down and be creative immediately. And part of the template that you should save for yourself should include this mapping. So you should really only have to do this once. So I would encourage you to save your work here as a template and uh, build upon that as you refine your idea of the perfect starting place for your projects. Now that we have our controls mapped, we're ready to begin. And this point here is truly what will become the starting point for you in your daily work. And so the MPC plugin works much the same as a plugin as it does standalone. Any projects that you create in the standalone version or within say Ableton or another DAW, you can load up right here in the logic version of the plugin. And so we're going to launch a just a demo project that we created earlier and we'll use this uh, as we go along. To use the sample record feature within Logic, we need to enable Logic's sidechain input. So if you have the plugin options hidden, click this little bubble in the upper right hand corner to show them. Next to sidechain, choose the input on your MPC hardware that you've connected your audio source to. We have our audio source connected to input 2. Now that you've done that, you can access the sample record feature by pressing shift, sample record. Before you start recording, set an appropriate time for your sample. We have 20 seconds here, which should be sufficient. When you're ready to record, don't push the record button here on the transport. Instead, push the dedicated sample record button up here under F6. In this section, we'll cover some features specific to the multi-output version of the plugin. Again, this is the version that we chose here under AU Instruments, Akai, MPC. We chose multi-output here. Under the track mixer, you have multiple output options for each track. By default, they're all set to out one and two. You also can route each track to the submixes, which are over here or out to a total of eight stereo outputs. We'll route our keys to three and four, and we'll route our bass out to five and six. Out in Logic's Mixer, which you can open by choosing Window, Mixer, or selecting Command 2, you'll see that we basically have one track and the master outs for logic. To view the additional outputs that the multi-output version gives us access to, look for the plus icon, which is below the mute and solo switches on this channel. By clicking the plus icon, we'll reveal all of the additional outputs. These will show up as auxiliaries. You can see here, this is output 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Since we're only using three, we'll narrow this view down to show just three. When we hit play in the hardware, we're going to see discrete outputs for our keyboards and our bass out here in the Logic Mixer. This can be really convenient for your mixing process, especially if you have an outboard controller such as a Mackie control that you're going to manipulate the mixer out here in Logic with. You can also take advantage of Logic's advanced signal routing, auxiliaries, etc. You also have additional insert options. Of course, you have inserts here within the MPC plugin, but this gives you added flexibility. Another important advantage of this setup is that you can make use of Logic's advanced export options. 
you can export all of your tracks as discrete audio files. This can be very useful if you want to archive your project for future remixes, if you want to provide stems or discrete tracks of your project to another producer or mix engineer uh, to allow them to remix your project even though they don't have Logic, if they use Pro Tools, if they use some other DAW, you can provide them exports of your project with all the plugins and, and all of the unique sounds that you've added uh, in a simple WAV file format. We'll walk through this export operation right now. If I choose File, Export, All Tracks as Audio Files, or Shift-Command-E, Logic's going to say that there's nothing to bounce. The reason is, as far as Logic is concerned, we have a single track and there's nothing on it. That's because, so far, all of the MIDI we've recorded is inside the MPC plugin, and all of the audio being generated is being generated by the MPC plugin. There's actually no audio or MIDI content inside our Logic project. Also, even though we have three channel strips out here in our mixer, which is open by pressing Apple II, there's really only one track in our project. To accomplish our multi-output bounce, you'll want to perform the following trick. In Logic, in your timeline, next to your track, right-click or control-click in the empty space and choose Create Empty MIDI Region. This will let Logic know that our project is not, in fact, empty. Now, when we go to File, Export, and All Tracks as Audio Files, we won't get that error message that there's nothing to bounce. In the window that opens, select a destination for your export, choose your output options, for example, 24-bit AIF, and here we have an important choice. The default option here is one file per track. However, You'll notice we still only have one track. It's only in our mixer, Apple II, that we have three channel strips. And so it makes sense for us to choose one file per channel strip. This way we'll get a discrete audio file for our bass, keys, and drums. One file per channel strip. Click Save and your project will be bounced. Out in the Finder, we can locate our export and listen to the results. Those are our keys, that's our bass, and that's our drums, all those discrete audio files.